is 2023 and we have come too far as women to not be financially savvy and know the financial status of our households. Okay. This is another episode of Becoming with Angelina Watkins, and I'm your host, Angelina, your queen of becoming. And I started this podcast to help women overcome emotional and financial hurdles while becoming the best version of themselves so they could turn their passion into profit. So long story short, I'm here to help you win at love, life, and money. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about financial infidelity. Yes, y'all, financial infidelity is a thing. And we have come too far in our walk as women not to know what the financial status of our household is, not to know what money is coming in, what money is going out, not to know how much is the mortgage and the car payments and the insurance and and all those things that we need to know as to what is our net worth, how much are we paying out in taxes, and if my husband died today, can I take care of all of this? We're going to get into that. But before we do, I want to welcome all my newcomers and those who um, join me here every Thursday. Thank you for tuning in. Um, Always, always make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you don't miss another episode. Now, this episode is going to be great. So I want to know from you because financial infidelity is not something we talk about a lot, but it's real. It is real. And so as I want to know from you, um, as you watch this episode, what do you think about financial infidelity? But anyway, let's get into it, okay? I don't want to waste any time. Let's talk about this financial infidelity. And it's going to be taken from 2 Kings 4. This is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. And it's so much into that story. And I can go on and on about all of the lessons in this one story, but I'm going to stick to the topic. Um, But the story in 2 Kings 4 is about a widow woman, a widow woman who was married to a prophet and the prophet died and he left her in debt, but she didn't know they were in debt until the bill collectors came to the door telling her that you're going to have to pay this debt that your husband had, or we're going to take your two sons and they're going to be our slaves. And now she doesn't know what to do. She's distraught. And oh my God, I done already lost my husband. I'm about to lose my sons. What am I going to do? So she goes to the prophet Elijah like, I need your help. And he's like, well, you know, what can I do for you? She's like, I'm going to lose my sons. Can you tell me what I need to do? Because my husband's left me in this debt. And I ain't got nothing. I ain't got no money to pay this. He says, well, what you got in your house? She's like, I ain't got nothing in my house. I ain't got nothing but all, but nothing but this olive oil. So the story goes on where he tells her to go borrow some vessels from her neighbors and then fill up those vessels with oil, then sell the oil and then pay off the debt and then live off the rest. That's so much in that. But I want to concentrate on the beginning of that story, which is that we had a woman married to a man who was in debt and she didn't know that he was in debt until he died. And then when he died, he left her with nothing, no money to take care of herself, no money to take care of her sons, no money to pay off the debt. Okay. And that is what we call financial infidelity. When you are in a marriage, okay, wives, listen up. When you are in a marriage where you have a spouse who has created debt, they've gone out and got credit cards, they're spending money, they're doing, they're buying property, they're doing all kinds of stuff and you have no clue, no clue what's going on. Then when they die is when you find out they've got all this debt. Or when you go for a divorce, you find out, oh my God, they've got all these assets. You didn't even know they had assets, that you were wealthy because he was living it up somewhere else with all the money that he was making and the assets that he was buying, or he just then left you and left you in debt. And so it's, we're, we've come too far. We're in 2023, y'all. 2023. And there are still women 
who are in marriages or wives who are in marriages in which they don't know what's going on in their household financially. They don't pay the bills. Um, the husband works. They stay home. They take care of the household. They don't know how much money he makes. They don't know how much money is coming in. They don't know how much is going out. They don't know what the expenses are. And if you don't think that this is real, get on TikTok. I've seen lots of videos where women women will tell you, I don't know what the, how much the mortgage is. You don't know how much the mortgage is? Well, what, if, what happens if he died? Can you pay that mortgage? Can you make those car payments? Can you pay for that insurance for the car? Can you pay for that insurance for the home? Can you pay for the children's education? We can't keep going through life not knowing what the expenses are in our home. Not knowing what money is coming in. Because you never know the time or the day when your husband will be gone. And then you're left to pick up the pieces. And now you've got this debt that you've got to deal with because this is marital debt. Y'all was married, so you can't just walk away from you. You can't get out of it. What are you going to do? And so we have to be a little bit more aware of money, how money works, and, and knowing what's going coming in and out of your household, knowing what your husband is doing, okay? And, and there's a difference between being financially responsible and then there's their financial infidelity. Being financially irresponsible is you just not paying no attention. You're not knowing what's going on. But then you have financial infidelity where you think you know what's going on. You know what you're making. You know what he's making. You know what the bills are. But secretly, they're off creating debt that you have no clue that they've created. They're buying property, they're buying um, cars, they're getting credit cards and um, maxing them out. They're just doing all kinds of stuff. And you don't know, you don't know. And it's not that you're not financially savvy, but now we're dealing with financial infidelity. When you're, That's when your spouse is sneaking behind your back. Sneaking behind your back creating bills, racking up credit cards, and creating debt. And what you don't want to do is find yourself in a position where you're now responsible for it. So what are you going to do? What can a wife do to protect herself from financial infidelity? You're going to have to protect the your economic value and get a life insurance policy on your husband. Let's face it, ladies, especially coming out of the pandemic, it's so many people who we, we've lost loved ones. We never know the time of the day where we're going to lose a loved one. And you need to make sure that you have insurance that if that person was to pass away, you have money to now pay the bills because you're going from maybe a one income household to no income or possibly a two income household to one income. And that's going to jeopardize the lifestyle that you've been used to. And maybe you can make it off of one income, but you should get a life insurance policy and make sure that it's enough to pay off the house. Why should you have to pay this mortgage by yourself? Making sure that you can pay off whatever debt that you all may have accumulated because you don't wanna be left grieving and still having to pay for debt like the widow woman. She's grieving. She done lost the love of her life. She done lost her husband. And in the midst of grieving, you at my door asking me for money? How devastating is that? Nobody has the, the mindset to think about money and paying any debt when they just lost the love of their life. So that's why we need insurance. Insurance gives us a peace of mind. Insurance will allow us to sleep at night. This is not a, a this is a non-negotiable, okay? I remember hearing a story of Grant Cordon. I don't know if any of you know Grant Cordon. He is a um, a very well-known real estate investor, um, and he talks and he tells a story one time where he talks about how his his dad passed away, and he had an insurance policy on himself 
that his mom was able to, because his mom wasn't working, but his mom was able to then take that money and pay off the house and invest the rest of it and then live off of, of that and take care of him and his brother. So let's not think that it won't happen to us. Don't put off tomorrow what you need to do today. If you do not have an insurance policy on your husband or husbands, you need to have one on your wife, okay? If you do not have an insurance policy on your spouse, you are setting yourself up for financial ruin because the day they leave this earth, you're going to be without you're going to be have a financial void and you're not going to be able to fill it. Unless, of course, you're wealthy and you got your own business, you got your own money and you ain't got to worry about it. But again, why should you? You shouldn't have to. So get the insurance policy. Don't be like this widow woman left with nothing. Of course, there wasn't insurance back then. Um, don't be like the widow woman and don't know what's going on in your household financially, you need to know what money's coming in and what money's going out. Just don't be that person, okay? Keep up on it. Know your business. Keep track of it. Know what's going on. And don't you be that person who commits financial infidelity. And then you're going behind your spouse's back, racking up debt, that when you die, you leave them despondent and in financial ruin. Okay, now, where you are, not where you have to be, your past does not define you, you define you, so heal, transform, and pursue you.